Thank you very much. And I think what we will do, uh, this is a meeting on opioid and the tremendous effect that's uh, taken place over the last little period of time. And I'm very proud of it, the people working so hard on it. But I thought what I'd do is ask Secretary Wilkie to give a statement as to what just happened with respect to Choice and the VA, because I think it's a very, very big deal. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, sir. Um, June 6th was a doubly important day. We were celebrating the 75th anniversary of the Normandy Rockies. And for VA, we began to implement the Mission Act, which you signed uh, last year. On that day, 44,000 veterans came to us to ask for greater choice in their health care on day one. And we began to open up that aperture and provide them for the first time with urgent care across the country. So they now have what their fellow citizens have had for many years. And we expect uh, them to take greater advantage of it as we go along. We've contacted over 9 million veterans to tell them this is now available to them. And it is one of the great transformative steps in the history of our That's department. That's fantastic. And it's That's choice. Very good, very good stuff. Right. VHS. Yes. So for 44 years, they've been trying to get it, and we got it. And they're loving it, I hear. Yes. Yes, sir. That many on the first day. Uh, that's a testament to That's a tremendous testament. Yes, sir. Congratulations. Thanks. Come here. I'm proud of you. That's Thank fantastic. You, sir. Thank you very much. Proud of you. Thank you very much. Kellyanne? Mr. President, thank you. The focus that the First Lady and you have placed on the opiate and drug demand drug supply crisis roiling our nation is starting to produce positive results. We are all aware of the harrowing statistics, the tens of thousands of lives lost every year and other lives ruined. But today we wanted to present to you, um, through members of your cabinet and your administration, sir, a progress report. And I have some <clears throat> scraps here for you to look at as well. I will tell you that since you declared the public health emergency and since you have introduced a three-pronged approach to focus on prevention, education, treatment and recovery, and law enforcement and interdiction, all three of those areas have produced very positive results. There's a lot of work to be done. Battleships like this turn very slowly. We didn't get here overnight. We won't get out of it overnight. But it really does show how the whole of government approach, focusing on treatment and recovery of the whole person, is bearing fruit. Mr. President, in your opioid announcement in Manchester in March of 2018, where the First Lady and you talked about your vision and what to do in the opioid crisis, you called for a one-third reduction over the next three years in first-time prescriptions. I'm happy to report that you achieved that number in the first year alone. And that is owing in large part to enhanced awareness and education by both the prescribers and the consumers. People, there are just fewer people using these opioids now. Your take-back days that are led by Administrator Dillon have produced 4.7 million pounds of pills in the five take-back mm -hmm. days, the last Saturdays in April and October. This is 4.7 million pounds of pills. Had you said 4.7 million pills, that would be impressive. But pounds of tiny pills that are just in the supply that people aren't using. They're unused, they're unnecessary, and they're expired. And that's enough to fill up 20 Boeing 757s right. with pills. So that's out of the supply chain. 1.2 billion lethal doses of fentanyl were interdicted by our Department of Homeland Security. That includes ICE and CPB, of course, in last fiscal year alone. I'd like to say to you, Mrs. Trump and Mr. President, that is at the points of entry, the 26 points of entry, but that's also between the points of entry. And we don't always hear that. This is just what we know about. We don't know how much we're missing. But that is literally saving lives. It was enough fentanyl to kill every American three plus times over. In addition, the big ad campaign that you've asked your, your administration to put forward, we've had 1.4 billion views of all of the advertising and marketing materials, about 58% of our target market. Uh, young people, the halo effect of 15 to 30 year olds have seen these and I'm happy to report that the long form ad that we have out won the Emmy this year for the long form ad and that's pretty exciting. <clears throat> uh, more overdose reversing naloxone. Your Surgeon General put out the first Surgeon General's advisory in 13 years last year and it was about making naloxone and Narcan more available to we the people and allowing us to feel comfortable to administer that either through a mist or a simple injection for those around us. This is literally saving lives. Um, and then, of course, Secretary Wilkie will expound upon this, 
but you have 117, roughly 118,000 fewer veterans being prescribed opioids. I think what the VA and you have done, Mr. President, is make clear that pain management need not mean pain medication. There are other alternatives to try first. There's a lot of progress. I'd like to um, invite different members of the administration to weigh in, but before I do, I would just like to say that probably the most remarkable bipartisan piece of legislation that you signed in your time as president was H.R. 6. This is the single largest piece of legislation ever signed in the history of our country on a drug crisis at one time. It ended up being a compilation of 50 different pieces of legislation. Usually when you add them together, you lose support. We actually gain support. Every single Democrat voted for H.R. 6, including all the ones running for president. Right. And I think they see the need in their own communities. It's overwhelmingly bipartisan piece of legislation. Among other things, H.R. 6 included the CRIB Act. And this is an issue that our First Lady has really brought to the attention of the nation, that they understand one in 100 babies born every day, roughly 150 newborns every day in our country, are born already addicted, already chemically dependent. And the First Lady has raised awareness and resources that allows Medicaid reimbursement for counseling service and other health provisions so that, uh, that we're keeping the mother and the newborn together. Better for the newborn, much better for the mother. The First Lady's efforts are also busting through the silence and the stigma that attaches with a youth involvement in drugs. And uh, we also are very happy to report that as part of H.R. 6, the STOP Act is, has led to about a six times increase in the number of packages that are being examined coming from foreign sources. That literally is cutting off the flow of drugs getting in our community. There's much more to report, but I'd like to begin with our Director Jim Carroll of ONDCP to give you a report. We were just briefed on our success in China with fentanyl, and he's been traveling around the world. Jim? Great, thank you. Good afternoon, both of you. Um, the, as you recall, um, you did the work at the G20 last year, led to China scheduling fentanyl for the first time ever. Um, the early reports are they've taken this seriously, and they're beginning to implement the enforcement actions that we need to serve. I've now rescheduled the trip to China, and I will be going at the end of the summer. The, what's important to note is that it, we really do have a whole government approach on this. For the first time ever, we have a government that is united against this, with 200 Americans dying a day. I've implemented your vision, as Kellyanne spoke, of the three-prong approach, and it's beginning to pay off. You're going to hear from the other members of the administration today about their successes domestically, but also it's key to know internationally we are setting the bar for going after this. Have you noticed a change in China since uh, the trade negotiations broke off, a change with regard to the fentanyl? Absolutely. What we're seeing is they're now at the table. They want to talk to us. They're engaged. We are actually in You may have got better. I was thinking maybe we'll get worse. Yes, this, is why fentanyl, it did. this is why they're great negotiators, right? The, it what the opposite. Most people would say, <laughs> oh, right? Isn't that something? That's very nice. It That's went from non existent nice. to that. Tell the them table. I appreciate it very much. That's very nice. I will. G20. I will. It's very nice. Yep. So we're beginning to pack this. What we're also doing, of course, is working with the families and working with the children. They love what we're doing here. For the first time ever, you've committed more resources, more people, and a vision for this. And it's paying off. And you're going to hear from the rest of the administration now. Thank you very much. Great job. You did a great job. Dr. Jawar, our Assistant Secretary yes. of Health at HHS. Dr. Jawar, you see a decrease in the number of overdose deaths in some of our hardest hit states like West Virginia, Ohio, Pennsylvania. Could you update us? Yes, yes ma'am. Good afternoon, Mr. President, Mrs. Trump. Uh, as a physician, I can assure everyone that the current opioid and overdose crisis is the most daunting public health challenge of our time. But under your leadership, with policies and programs implemented by people around the table, we are seeing real results now saving lives. And I want to give you just a, a snapshot of that. Based on data released just this morning, so this is the latest data by the CDC, I'm pleased to report that this month is the sixth consecutive month of reporting for which overdose deaths were lower compared to the previous year. That's a remarkable That's finding. Fantastic. Nationwide overdose deaths have now fallen 4.4% over the past year. And let's look at some specific states. In New Hampshire, where you first announced your initiative, Drug overdose deaths are down 4.8%. Florida, 8.1%. West Virginia, 10.3%. Iowa, 18.2%. Pennsylvania, 18.5%. And Ohio, down 23.3% oh, as a result of the policies and programs that we've implemented. And those are really the hardest hit states, it would say, right? They are the ones that everyone would say, look at them, how hard were they hit? 
but the great cooperation between the federal and the local and the state have led to these kinds of decreases. Great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Very impressive. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Mr. President. Mrs. Trump, uh, I want to start on a point that Kellyanne has been uh, making for many months, particularly for VA. We needed a change in culture. Uh, many of those who come to us are like professional athletes who've retired. Uh, they've had a lifetime of trauma, jumping out of airplanes, wounds, and combat. And they come to us anticipating a lifetime of chronic pain. And in order to treat pain instead of the brain, we had to change the culture, which meant offering things that would have been anathema in my father's day in the Vietnam era. So instead of giving someone a pill, we tell them we can use acupuncture, or we can use Tai Chi, even yoga, music therapy, opera therapy. And in addition to that, our physicians are in the process of reviewing all of our long-term opioid cases. And we are substituting successful opioids with combinations of aspirin and ibuprofen, aspirin and acetaminophen. Uh, we are finding that that treats the pain better than the traditional use of opioids. And as a result, we are getting healthier veterans. Uh, the other thing I would say, in addition to what Kelly said about people turning away from opioids in the veterans community, since you issued your directive, Veterans have turned in 35 tons of opioids. That's a lot of medicine uh, for a population that ventures close to nine billion. So as part of the cultural change, we are changing the way the country looks at opioids and treats it, and it is a sea change. And it is probably one of the more important contributions a VA has made to the nation to turn our attention away from the use of these medicines and to try to make people healthier as a whole. So how are we doing with coming up with a cure to the opioid? Meaning, uh, I've instructed every single agency to work on this with Dr. Collins and all of the folks uh, on a painkiller that's not addictive. And you would think they could do that. You, right. you would see, you see common uh, medicines sold over the counter that aren't totally ineffective, right? So how are they doing a painkiller that is not addictive? So what we are doing is we have been successful in using combinations of over-the-counter medicines, things as simple as aspirin, things that have been around since the late 19th century. And we are finding that those have the same or greater effect when it comes to treating pain. They're not addictive. They're not influencing the brain. So you're saying the same or greater? Absolutely. Yes, sir. How come right. nobody knows that? Well, again, it goes back to what she's been preaching for a long time, and that is you have to shift the culture. You have to shift the trends. People have done things for so long that it takes a big push to get them on a different path, particularly in the military. If you had come to my father, who was severely wounded in the invasion of Cambodia, and told him that we would offer you Tai Chi or acupuncture to treat that pain. My nose would have been flat against my face because it was not part of the ethos. So we're on that journey, and I think what you've started in the last year has propelled us, and I believe uh, it's starting to have an impact in the Department of Defense where veterans' treatment should start before they even come to. That's fantastic, Robert. Let me ask you one other question, so probably related. Uh, much more so than we want to even think it's related, and that's suicides. So you have suicides, and I hear numbers of 21 and 22 a day for veterans, which is an incon I thought it was a mistake when I read it no, the first time. True. Is it 21, 22, 23? 20. It's 20, so it's a slightly down. It was 22 yeah. originally. Now, I called you two months ago, and I said there is a — I had seen it somewhere, and I've read it — read really quite a bit about it. I think it's made by Johnson & Johnson. But it's a suicide. It's if you're depressed, yes, you take it. It's an inhaler, and it almost immediately cures depression, at least for a little while. And I said, order, corner the market on it, and give it to anybody that has the problem, because you have people calling, and our our folks do a great job on the phone, but it's a telephone. You have people calling, looking for help, and if those people had that. 
I'm, I'm hearing, like, instantaneously they're in much better shape. How are you doing with that? We are working with Johnson & Johnson to distribute it. Uh, we should have it in all of our VA. That could make a at the end of the year. But it's, it's in the purchasing process right now. Is it now. very effective? It's very effective. So that all of these people that are committing suicide every day, 21, 20, 22, a day killing themselves, it's hard to believe. Honestly, when I heard the number, I said it can't be possible. How could it be so many? Uh, if this is as good as we hear it is, certainly on a fairly short term, it gets them over that problem. And I assume this lasts for how long a period? Well, the, the, it, it, it is treated in stages. I think right. the first dose lasts for a few days, and then it's Which a, is, it gets them you over build the on that, and you build up to a certain So you're dose. working something with the... With Johnson, yes. Okay. With the company. I, and I think they'll be very generous to you. Yes. And if you'd like, I'll help you to negotiate it, because seriously, mm -hmm. I just said corner the market. You're on a roll. Corner the market. <laughs> All right, so you're working on that. Very yes. important. I think that's going to be incredible. I bet the first uh, few months you're going to see numbers of it. People are going to say, what happened? If it's as good as I hear. Good. Thank you very much. Good. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. President. Thank you, Secretary Wilkie. Um, it is true that Dr. Collins at NIH continues to develop the non-addictive uh, opioid, and I think some in the private mm -hmm. sector are trying to do that also. Mrs. Trump, Mr. President. So our effort as the whole of government approach has been to treat the whole person. Sometimes if you're fortunate enough to go through a drug court program or a drug treatment program, you come out on the other side. Where are the housing opportunities, education, skills, employment? So through Secretary Costa and the Department of Labor, they've been able to issue record numbers of dislocated worker grants and actually get the opioid addiction levels down among federal workers, if you can tell us more about that. that. That's right, so Mr. President. Um, this is Trump, as, as you know, we're the largest, the federal government's largest employer, and the Department of Labor oversees the workers' compensation programs for federal workers. Um, even before you declared it a national emergency, you directed us to, to make all efforts to address the opioid issue. And so since your, since your election, we've had outstanding results. We achieved those through, one, changing the protocols that physicians need to take in order to prescribe. Um, under the Federal Workers' Compensation Program, physicians now need to write an individualized assessment and a letter of medical necessity to explain why opioids are needed. Um, second, we have a team where physicians prescribe a certain amount or certain dosages. We'll work with that physician to ensure that the treatment is tailored to the individual. And third, we communicate both with the patient and by letter advise them of the danger of opioids, but we'll also let physicians that prescribe certain amounts or certain dosages know that we're monitoring their prescriptions so that they are aware that those prescriptions might be too high or outside of the range. And so the results since your election, a 65% decrease in claimants receiving a morphine equivalent dose of 500 or more, the highest, 65% decrease, a 51% decrease in new prescriptions lasting longer than 30 days, and a one-third decrease in overall opioid use among federal workers. The second part of this, and as important... Does anybody know those numbers? Those numbers are have. astronomical. We'll see if right. they get caught. We, we Perhaps you people can report that. I mean, seriously, those are astronomical numbers. They, As really, when you're down 18%, those are astronomical numbers, too. That's a lot in a short period of time. A 65% decline in the highest dose, a 51% decline in 30, 30 day or longer prescriptions. That's fantastic. Um, the second thing that we've done is increase the fraud investigations because often these are fraudulent prescriptions. And we've gone from three uh, fraud investigations in 2016 to 42 in 2017 to 64 fraudulent investi investigations for fraud in 2018. So a 20-fold increase in investigations for, in essence, you know, places that are prescribing them fraudulently and getting opioids in the, in the circulation and undermining all these efforts, a 20-fold increase. And then finally, you know, going to Kellyanne's point, when individuals receive treatment for opioids, you know, they, they will leave a center and they will, you know, have addressed their issue. But then they need a job. They need a place to live. 
And so we've been working with governors to fund programs where in opioid treatment centers, they have access to job training and skills training so that when they are ready to re-engage with society, they have a future path that does not involve drugs. That's fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alex. Secretary McElhaney, if you'd like to tell us about yes. the members at DHS. Thank you, Mr. President, Mrs. Trump. We're, we're making significant progress on the law enforcement and interdiction pillar of your strategy uh, over the last 15 months. Uh, DHS, as Kellyanne noted, seized 5,000 pounds of fentanyl and its analogs last year, another 13,000 pounds uh, of heroin, uh, and we're doing more uh, this year. Uh, the two main vectors remain in the south of the border, uh, as well as in mail uh, coming in. And, and with our partners at U.S. Postal Inspection Service, we're doing much better in both of those vectors. Uh, one of the things that's been critical is your engagement with China and President Xi in getting additional data. So that mail coming in, we can assess it with advanced systems and do inspections and seizures right there in the mail facilities. Then we follow up with our partners in the investigation side with Homeland Security Investigations and the U.S. Postal Inspection Service. We made over 200 controlled deliveries, taking out pill presses and distribution centers from Manhattan to Oregon in the last year. So China's helping you. China's numbers have gone up dramatically. Uh, That's fantastic. Nobody knows this. That's fantastic. Yes. Since, since you engaged the president That's on it. That's fantastic. It's very nice so I to remember that. It, the thing I think is key to highlight is we're going to be getting better in the, in the coming months in, across all of this. We've trained 2,500 K-9s. Uh, we have new technology going into place on the southwest border. Uh, we're improving the advanced electronic data. And we've issued a, a challenge prize uh, to, to industry to come up with a better way to inspect mail packages coming into our facilities to see if we can detect these drugs without opening all the million packages in, in commerce. Uh, I'll be going to Huntington, West Virginia with Senator Capito and Senator Mansion on July 8th to see the community level uh, impact of the law enforcement partnerships mm -hmm. and to hear from them on what we can do better at the federal level. And then lastly, I just say, Mr. President, this is my sixth meeting in the West Wing with either you and with the First Lady on this issue. I know you've had many more, uh, but we're going to maintain our focus at DHS reflecting your focus on this key priority. And thank you, Kellyanne, for your leadership. And what about the southern border as it relates to drugs coming through? Yeah, so we have both the dual problem, vehicles at our ports of entry and people crossing between ports of entry. Right. And the investments we're making in the wall uh, between ports is going to help dramatically. Uh, and we're also buying a lot of technology so we can see in trucks and all those personal vehicles, a uh, huge investment that, that you advocated for in the, in the FY19 budget. We're deploying that technology now. How is the wall coming along? coming along aggressively. We built two miles last week. We're, we're up to about two miles a week uh, right now. So extending that capability uh, across key sectors. And you'll have by the end of next week, next year, how much do you think you'll have built? By the end of next year, over 400 miles in partnership. Over with 400 miles, right? That's correct. And we have to kick and scream for every inch because the Democrats just will not give us what we need. In fact, I think we're going to be very close to 500 miles by the end of the year, which will be great. Okay. That'll have a huge impact. That's fantastic. Thank you. Good Thank job. You. Good job. Mr. President, after two years of investigations, the DOJ and HHS um, have generated $3.3 billion in opioid fraud takedowns. We have Acting Administrator of the DEA, Udum Dillon, here today to tell us about that and more. Udum? Mr. President, Mr. Strong. Um, DEA has made great progress attacking uh, the opioid crisis through its regulatory and enforcement functions. And I'll just take a moment to discuss a couple of, uh, of relevant cases. So on the regulatory front, since 2016, DEA has reduced manufacturers' opioid quotas. That is the amount of opioids DEA authorizes to be produced by 47%. So this has significantly decreased the amount of addictive opioids available uh, to, for diversion for people to become addicted to, to overdose on. Um, Kellyanne already mentioned our uh, National Prescription Drug Take Back Day, the records we've set. Uh, last Prescription Take Back Day in April, we had over 6,000 uh, collection sites, the highest amount ever, and that's uh, mm. uh, thankful. we're thankful to our uh, state and local and tribal law enforcement partners who's helped, who helped us with that. Um, we've also um, emergency scheduled fentanyl analogs. This is very important because drug trafficking organizations are very uh, uh, flexible, and they change the, the composition of fentanyl so that it's not illegal. So we emergency scheduled it so fentanyl and all of its analogs are illegal. Um, that is going to expire next year, but we are working with Congress to permanently schedule all fentanyl analogs. 
Um, on the law enforcement front, we're working with our uh, global law enforcement partners to attack uh, the fentanyl uh, crisis, to attack fentanyl labs where they arise. We're working with our state and local partners to uh, seize drugs. Since 2017, we've seized more than 20,000 kilograms of heroin and over 6,700 kilograms of fentanyl. We're also attacking drug trafficking on the internet. We're seeing a lot of drugs being sold over the internet now, over the dark web. Uh, recently in March, working with the FBI and other federal law enforcement partners, we took down 50 dark net accounts uh, and arrested 61 individuals selling drugs on the internet. And most recently, also in April, DEA is continuing to hold accountable uh, pharmaceutical distributors who DEA um, regulates for the first time ever in April. Two executives of one of the top uh, pharmaceutical distributors in the U.S. were criminally charged for unlawfully distributing oxycodone and fentanyl. The company that uh, they worked for has already admitted liability and has paid a $20 million uh, fine. And uh, finally, Mr. President, DEA remains laser focused on uh, Mexican drug trafficking organizations, the ones who are bringing fentanyl and other drugs and poisoning our citizens, and we appreciate uh, all of your support. Would you want to name them terrorist organization or some designation that would give you additional power? No, sir. I think we have all the authority we need. We just need the cooperation of our uh, various foreign governments to attack them uh, more effectively. We're working to uh, gain that. Uh, Director Carroll talked about our efforts with China, and we're working with uh, other countries to be as effective as possible attacking these. And Mexico is going to be much different now, too. I think Mexico is going to start hitting them much harder. That would be very helpful, sir. Good. Let me know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, Mrs. Trump, one of the cruel ironies of these drugs pouring into our communities is that they're coming through our southern border and through our U.S. mail system. And so, as we know, the 21st century drug traffickers are using uh, low volume, high potency fentanyl in our own mail, tiny, tiny little amounts in packages. So today, I'm very happy to have USPIS Director Barksdale to give us an update on some of the progress that we have and some of the challenges that lie ahead. Thank you. First, uh, thank you, Mr. President. First Lady, Ms. Conway, for having us here today. As you know, they may not know, the Postal Inspection Service is the law enforcement branch of the Postal Service. We work very hard to still confidence in the U.S. mail and basically to protect the American public. One of my highest priorities as the Chief Postal Inspector right now is, is your issue of opioids, uh, particularly as they flow through the, through the mail system. Uh, so I want to thank you for your support on, on this initiative. Um, as Mrs. Conway stated, your 2018 building of the opioid initiative was the catalyst for us to facilitate greater interagency work in relationship with all of my colleagues here. So we've been leveraging our partnerships uh, since that time, we have actually placed postal inspectors with DEA, Customs and Border Patrol, um, and at the Office of National Drug and Control Policy. Uh, our partnerships have allowed us to better interdict synthetic opioids in the U.S. through the mail system. And we're also beginning to work closer with our local law enforcement partners. Uh, we're still employing our traditional law enforcement, but we've also moved to more of a 21st century attack. We've um, launched our cyber and analytics unit to help us better forecast and target international packages. And we also, as Director Dillon has mentioned, uh, we do a lot of work now in the dark web targeting internet sales. So uh, over the past couple of years, we have achieved a significant increase in the amount of domestic and international opioid seizures, uh, more than five times we seized this year than we've done four to five years ago. In FY18 alone, we made over 2,000 arrests in narcotics, removed over 96,000 pounds of illegal drugs and seized over $17 million in illegal currency. Mm. Uh, so we're still working for the sources. It's clearly China, even though we're starting to see a trend and maybe routed through other countries. Um, and then later this year in September, I plan to travel to China to address this with China with Director Carroll. Great. Good job. Thank, Thank you, sir. Mr. President, that concludes our presentation. If you have any questions or comments. Well, I, I would like to ask my wife, First Lady, to say a few words because she has been so much into the whole situation with the drugs and opioids in particular, but drugs. And uh, she has a son that she loves, and she wants to make sure that Baron doesn't have problems, and uh, she wants to make sure that a lot of people in this country, they see the suffering, the horrible suffering, and uh, I just want to thank you for the great job. You see the numbers, we're down 17, 18, 20 percent in one case, 21 percent. And, uh, Alex, the numbers you gave were incredible. Nobody has ever even thought of that 51 and 60 percent. 
So I want to thank you all, but I, I really think we owe a lot to the First Lady, and maybe you could say a few words. Thank you. Uh, thank you for all of your support, first of all, Kalyan. Um, uh, through my initiative, Be Best, I'm working with the families and our youth to get rid of stigma um, and talk about if you have a problem, uh, addiction problem, and uh, it's very important that you open up and ask for help. So I always say, love yourself more that you love drugs. And I will continue to do so to um, bring the awareness how dangerous drugs are. And talking with uh, the families and um, young mothers and youth of the United States. Thank well, you. you've had a great impact, and we appreciate it. We all appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you sir. Thank you all very much. Thank appreciate it. Thank you.